that I'd like to point out when working on the first study by Albert Volle. These are not necessarily in order of importance, but they are maybe in order of how much more advanced they need to be thought of. So the first one is practicing sequence patterns. So there are several sequence patterns in this, and I find that breaking apart the four note group in different ways helps you work out the technique and really learn the figure. So for instance, about midway through, we have arpeggios that, um, that go uh, eight descending in order. So that section right there can be kind of tricky. It doesn't necessarily fit under the fingers as well as we would like it to. So I break it down two different ways. The first way is to play it as the notes are stemmed together. So groups of uh, beats one and two and beats two and three together. And put big spaces in between each group. The other way to practice this is to shift the groups by one eighth note over to the left. So you're going to play a pickup into the downbeat. This also helps you with the phrasing of each of these small groups. And remember, within a sequence like this, we want to follow the pattern that he gives us for the dynamic. So this is a descending sequence, but we still want to crescendo through it because he marks a crescendo here. The next sequence that I found a little tricky was after the slurs. And. So you practice those two different ways of grouping those, uh, those sequence figures. The second thing is where to breathe in this etude. So you'll notice that I managed to play large stretches of this with one long breath. You may not be able to do that, and that's okay. So I've come up with two places in the most difficult section I found uh, in terms of figuring out where to breathe um, that I think I'm going to give you permission to go ahead and take a pause and really breathe there. So the first one uh, comes after the... Um, the first piano dynamic marking about four measures right before the marking that is crescendo. So we have this sequence that's all piano. So if you actually set up the breath by a little bit of a, a, a slow down of the tempo, just a little bit, enough to set up the fact that you are going to breathe because that right there after the F is a resolution of the harmony and the pickup notes where the crescendo is marked is a new idea. And there you can build the crescendo because you've just taken a fresh breath. So don't take too long on it, but that's one place that I'll give you permission to breathe. The next place is uh, 
pretty much right before the next crescendo, although you have to go back about a measure from where it's marked. So this is on my score, one, two, three, four, the fifth line after beat three. So we've had a sequence of eighth notes. So again, it comes after the resolution of the harmony that happens after the series of eighth notes. It's basically the same place in the music, but it's just in a different key as what we had before. All of the other places to breathe in this should make sense. Breathe after half notes, um, breathe where there's a rest, um, breathe when you have um, a natural pause in the music. Incidentally, I find that finding a place to breathe is a challenge through all 20 of these studies. So the third thing is the consistency of the articulation. There are lots of eighth notes at different dynamics in this piece, and they all have to have the same clarity at the beginning and the same length overall. Don't let the notes get longer or fluffier when they're softer, and don't let them get accented and punchy just because they're louder. So a good place to practice this uh, is the last one of these um, sequence patterns, right before the third line from the bottom. So all the same length, and you can take this much slower so that you can really listen to the length of your eighth notes. And then maybe try playing the same figure louder. Now the last thing is about the dynamics of this piece. They don't always fit, like I said, the pattern of the sequence figures, and they don't always come exactly when we expect the dynamics to change. So for instance, at the end of the second line, there's a piano marking, and it's an ascending sequence, meaning that the pattern goes up over the next several measures, but there's no dynamic change. And in fact, the crescendo isn't until midway through the next line. So you have to keep the piano, up to that point. Now you can crescendo. And you have to crescendo all the way to forte from the piano and you have about one measure and a, and a half to do it. So you have the, the widest range that he gives you. There are only two dynamics really throughout most of this and that's the piano and the forte. So you have a big range to play with in only a short period of time. Uh, the diminuendos that immediately follow this are a little tricky and maybe a little confusing. So in slower motion like that, you can hear that each one of those diminuendos is kind of a new start so that you can make those more dramatic and then make sure that the third one of those hairpins gets you all the way to piano. Before the beginning of the next sequence, which is again, piano all the way through to the middle of the next line. Then you can crescendo as the sequence descends. So it's a little bit backwards from how we want. Obviously you want to make the two slurs a real strong echo from each other. The first one is very loud and the next one is quite soft. All right, so enjoy your practicing and I hope to enjoy your performances of this study by Albert Vollet.